We got a knight here now. Oh, he's I, great. I switched my loadout, trying to get the advantage of the situation. It didn't. Man, really this place out. looks a little punishing. Um, it, it, it certainly turned up the heat. Um, <laughs> so, oh boy. Um, Sam, you're off the show. I'm sorry. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of PlayStation Underground. You got Tim and Justin here. Hey, hey. And we're joined by Tom Hewlett, who is a director at Way Forward. We're checking out Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Thanks, Tom, for joining us. Yeah, no problem. It's exciting. Uh, we're super excited to check out uh, a new area here, uh, a, a very a liquid hot magma-esque uh, <laughs> stage here um, in, in Bloodstained. Oh, so look at the... I love, immediately, I love kind of like the intense parallax effect going on with the environment there. Yeah, this is really cool. So, yeah, Tom, can you talk us to a, a little bit about, like, you know, this area and, you know, maybe where it, where it fits in with uh, the wider game? Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is a, a decent ways into the game. I have some pretty advanced equipment and abilities. We really wanted to show off... I mean, people have seen... Through the Kickstarter, a lot of basic information. Yeah. And this will kind of show off some of the depth of, you know, Igarashi's games have a legacy of just having super deep equipment and all these all this lore and stuff. And this will just show off a little taste of how, yeah. how deep that goes. I, I love that. So we'll be able to check out some different uh, different gear and, and options here. And I even love, like, the, the familiar there, which is very, you know, rep reminiscent of, like, Igavania's I've loved. And... Um, is that the is it the Car Carabas or wh how how do you pronounce that? Yes, that's uh, okay. Carabas. Okay. She's a uh, familiar, like you said. Cool. And, uh, oh, and now do we have a? We got a we got a knight careful. here now. Oh, he's I great. I switched my loadout, trying to get the advantage of the situation. It didn't. Man, really this out. place looks a little punishing. Um, it, it it certainly turned up the heat. Um, <laughs> so, oh boy. Um, Tim, you're off the show. I'm sorry. Uh, goodbye, everybody. So, yeah, for the uninitiated, you know, the uh, the sort of classic, like, Igavania style that we're referring to is, like, it's it's a side-scrolling, you know, action platformer where there's an emphasis on, you know, uh, usually, you know, acquiring new abilities or items or or what have you for the genre to explore new areas and unlock new areas. And and the castles and, and environments generally, like, start folding back in on themselves. Yeah, Koji, Koji Igarashi, uh, one of the forefathers of this genre, um, and he, he just, like, his, his work stands the test of time. And yeah. this is him kind of coming back and uh, taking, taking an, a new stab at this kind of game. Um, a lot of folks are really excited about it. There was a, a successful Kickstarter a few years ago when this game yeah. initially got off the ground. Successful in part to you, Justin. In some oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I dropped a lot of money. I I'm I'm a proud backer of Bloodstain, so I'm I'm very excited for this to uh, to finally launch. Well, thank you. So, so Tom, we are uh, we made it past a pretty perilous room there. <laughs> that was that was a pretty that's a pretty rough intro to to the area. So you got to be on your toes. And as you mentioned, it's a little bit later into the game, so I suppose that would make sense. Oh, that level up is actually that's perfect. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot going on right there, yeah. which is good. Um, so people saw I, I switched a couple equipment loadouts, yeah. uh, which you can do really quick. You can save them uh, several several different sets there. And then I got an ice blade because I figured we're in a fire area. That would stand to reason, yeah. And does that I, does that make a difference? Uh, yeah, it does. Oh, nice. uh, and then I leveled up when I killed that hellhound. So a lot going on. I've been using some different spells. This okay. is my oh, cool. ice build here. So are are the are the spells similar? Do they feel like uh, almost like a fighting game input, like where you have a, a sort of oh look at that. Um, you know so is it input based or so the spells I'm doing here are button based. You okay. can set your shards mm -hmm. um, in the menu. There's okay. several different types of shards, so you don't just have one at a time. Okay, so this is just tied to specific. Um, I can do a couple different abilities here. That's awesome. Oh, nice. The um, the running slash I did there, yeah. kill How off do you the do dragon. That? That's sort of a an input command. You'll find uh, books throughout the game. You can do the input commands without without reading the book, if you have the right weapon. But the books kind of tell you like, hey, use this weapon, try ah, this command. Okay. And so you can you can experiment or you can you can find those as you explore. Um, but they open up a lot of cool possibilities um, that I'll hopefully show off if I stop. Yeah, that's getting hit so much. That's great. So there's <laughs> a lot. Of, there's a lot of customizability. So you know, just between like loadout, like you said, gear loadouts themselves, like being able to, to swap between a few different options. Oh, of course there are mimics. Oh, that's brilliant. Sorry, death traps. Yeah. Um, and then again, you know, I guess for the uninitiated, since we're kind of hopping in halfway through, so the the game stars Miriam, right? And yes. and she's a, a afflicted with a, a curse that sort of like it turns some of her skin to crystal. 
Um, and there's some other characters that have th this curse is sort of like a thematic tie with, with elements of the game. Yeah, so Miriam is a shard binder, um, along with several other characters in the game. Actually, let me show you. That's really cool over here. Oh, cool. Um, and so that means um, demons can be sort of uh, uh, melted down into these shards okay. um, mm -hmm. as their essence. And so shard binders like Miriam can use those to gain abilities. But use every part of the animal. Doing so, and see, I've uncovered a hidden room here. Oh, oh nice. nice. Just by attacking that enemy, you kind of... Uh, so your wind-up with that attack also it actually, Yeah, it hit the wall behind me. Cool. But um, but using shards, obviously something that powerful has some has some drawbacks. So that's right. the curse, like you mentioned. Um, the shard binders normally die, their body deteriorates. So, okay. um, you know, what ramifications will that have on Miriam? Yeah. The players will have to find out. Oh. <laughs> so uh, that's that's very exciting so and then w one thing we we're seeing there besides the you know secrets are, are infamous with like you know these igavania style games and you you stumbled across the one by you know slashing your sword here and there and so but that one we just went we slipped through was that only accessible with um the the ability you're using where you're kind of able to to ricochet your uh, like a ricochet teleport type thing yeah so that's an advanced um navigation mechanic okay so oh, cool. As you can see, there's there's different possibilities. That the one I just did was uh, pretty simple. Just get through the little narrow corridor. Okay. Oh, but cool. I like that that dive kick. You yeah. Can do too. Even e even just to satisfying. to yeah to negate some you know some damage by touching an enemy. Um, useful. Yep. Very Let's nice. I like a, I like Miriam's outfit here. Is that all customizable? Is that stuff yeah, that you can so swap in and out? She has a cool hat. You can see. She's yeah. Got sort of. <laughs> it's crucial. Uh, pink duds instead of her normal uh, blue. Sure. Very cool. Um, but yeah, so there's there's different things you can find. You can customize her hair. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, can we actually talk quickly through the the UI there, like the 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 sort of wheel that you were working with? Um, oh, was that like a parry mechanic? Yeah, it's a parry attack. Nice. Oh, great. Okay. Sorry, you were saying. <laughs> no, that was, that was awesome. So it's very, there are some very timing-based abilities and uh, high skill-based abilities like that that, that parry. But, arrows, oh, awesome. So yeah, I was kind of curious about the UI there. So this this wheel, is this allowing you to kind of uh, sort of swap on the fly here? and? Yeah, so that's just uh, an L2. Cool. And it brings up the wheel, and you can see you can buy some slots. We've bought five slots here, and you just... Click the one you saved, and you're you're good to go. Okay. Oh, awesome. so like different loadouts. Yeah. So That's great. You don't have to constantly go in and out of the menu. Smart. Um, you can. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You can see your options. Um, Love those quality of life. Um, here's a little uh, teleport room that'll take me elsewhere in the castle. Oh, We're not going to nice. do it. Uh, but no, we will, yeah. We're here <laughs> to check out this area, but it's cool to, to know that you can use this sort of stained glass. Yeah. Yeah. And there's books you find to give you some some lore, and uh, here's a here's a cool save room. Oh, oh, very cool. So you know, there's something cool behind the door that we're not going to look at. So thank you, you know, <laughs> well, thank you for <laughs> thank you for, for putting the uh, the the portal so close to the save. By the way, that's oh, yeah. always critical. So um, yeah, really cool. So are there any other sections within you know this this lava area that are worth checking out, or should we should we? Maybe oh no, you're cursed. I am cursed. Yes. Check out a different section of the game. Um, yeah, we have a. We have a boss that uh, it was it was previously shown at some okay. some events, but uh, you guys might want to give it a try. See how you do against uh, I some dragons. Would yeah, love that. Sure. Hopefully, um, you know it's not <laughs> as rough as, as this area, but well, I'm happy to give it a shot. So let's jump ahead to that boss battle. Sure thing. All right, so we're back and on our way to check out one of the boss battles in Bloodstained here. Uh, yeah, I love these save rooms. Like. Um, such just like a unique vibe in here. I could I could hang out in here for a little while. I think. We took we took a moment to uh, change into a, a more comfortable outfit. Yeah, it looks nice you pose. The, you got the uh, the purple flowers. It's nice in here. Yeah. Yeah, she's got an outfit for every occasion. Yeah, so so oh. different outfits. We got some lovely cool, gas uh, mask, some earmuff headphone things, and cool. a gas mask, which is functional. <laughs> <laughs> and is it uh, is it really? Is that actually a thing? It, it provides some defense boost. Oh, nice. Um, so um, I mentioned uh, you can get some hints on weapon usage. So here's a bookshelf that sort of gives me a little helm oh, cool. splitter action. Nice. Okay, cool. So it's some different moves that you can try out there. Yeah, so people can look for those at home when they play the game. Awesome. That's awesome. So remember to read. It, it pays off, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then with some secrets, um, if we play our cards right, Careful. we might have to kill that guy first. I um, believe in you. Our Kara boss is going nice. to help us find a shortcut. Because... I know that she's she's fond of singing. Is that right? Is that a, a, <laughs> a thing that she can do? Yes, she's okay. fond of singing. 
Oh. So she'll just point it out. Oh, nice. Smart. So, you know. So you might not have noticed that otherwise. And Yeah. So treat your familiars well, oh, everybody. Capacity up. What, what, the capacity of what just increased? Um, ammo. So you, oh, have, cool. you can have... Okay, so you just have ranged. some. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Some guns. Oh, nice. So yeah, how many different types of weapons are there that Miriam has at her disposal? Is there a, a pretty wide variety? Yeah, we've got, um, you know, uh, knives, swords, great swords, staves, spears, guns. Wow. Whips. She's got a whip, which is cool. Natural. Of course, yeah. Oh, that, you, that's a great animation. How else too. could you really slay the creatures of the night without a whip? Uh, yeah, the animation's awesome and on that. And then there's a, a sectional staff, which I like, because you can do the, the oh, secret cool. move and extend it. So there's lots of cool stuff to experiment with. That's awesome. And so, and then speaking of ways to sort of combat, you know, the creatures of the night, uh, or are you uh, getting ready to hand the controller over to to us here? Justin, do you want to give this boss a, a, I, a I'll go? I'll let you decide. Gonna, I'm going to go. This. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm settling in. I apologize for what you're about to see. Let so me just get my, my bearings here. the professional here. here. I was just going to mention, oh, sweet. So this is like a steampunk uh, chargeable yeah, blade nice. here. Yeah, our, our testers gave you a good weapon to use, so hopefully. That's great. <laughs> um, any other uh, inputs I should be mindful of here? Is um, that, okay. Whoa. That probably was That's a, a thing. Yeah. Yeah, we give you a super tech there on your okay. on your triangle. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think if you do uh, the right stick, we'll aim. Okay. And if you do R two, I believe. You okay. Got there's high range. Multi okay. arrows. Cool. And uh, you have some food. You can uh, there's a there's a full crafting system in the game for equipment, items, shards that you can level them up. Okay. And uh, food, you can you can craft some food. So you have a pizza and some things to heal with. <laughs> I mean, I don't go into any boss battles without uh, a, a nice a greasy slice. slice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, hello. Um, hey, gorgeous. Yeah, he's, he heard us talking about pizza, and he is he's <laughs> here. He does not prefer cold pizza. Oh, wow. He got... He, I feel like there are two heads. Yeah. Yep, there are two heads. Better than one. So, as you mentioned, this this <laughs> boss previously shown at PAX, but uh, I was not able to, to have a go at him. Oh, man. Um, you got this, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> you got this. T Tim, you focus oh, on playing. You, you got this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, believe, we believe in you. So, uh, Koji Igarashi coming back here and uh, bringing you guys in to help with this. How much kind of brainstorming around, like, the different boss creatures and, like, all the crazy weapons and stuff? What were those meetings like coming up with all the different things in the game? So, so WayForward's input on this game is, is fairly recent. Um, uh, Igarashi had another developer, Deco, doing the bulk of the game. Um, but, you know, games are very complex. And yeah, schedules yeah. are a thing, and, and the Kickstarters were getting uh, antsy to see the return on their investment. Sure. And so... Um, Art Play Iga's group really looked for. Uh, you can you can uh, tab over. Oh, oh really? Okay. There well, go. I just hit your pizza. Yep. You're cool. Good. Thank you. Um, and so they looked for a, a team that would understand sort of the Egovania genre, who had experience doing games like this. Yeah. And way forward and, uh, certainly fits someone, that bill. Someone told them way forward. Thanks. And awesome. <laughs> um, so you know we came in and we sort of evaluated where's the game at. We looked at. Um, all the various things we could do to help. Um, graphically, oh. gameplay, Whew. game oh. balance, map layout, just just what could we do? Yeah. And then we had a big meeting in Japan with Iga's group and Deco and s sort of found like, well, here's here's some things WayForward could do here and there. And then that's what we did. So cool. Um, a big impact we had was sort of um, the art and the environment art. Yeah. Which looks great. I mean, I love there's a, a, tra a trailer that released somewhat recently showing some of the upgrades to the, the art that have happened over time, and it's yeah. just really striking. It looks fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, all that stuff, you know, um, a lot of the backers pointed it out on the early demos and stuff. And, of course, you know, games look rough early on. That's just a normal part of game development. But bringing WayForward on really helped them make sure it got the level of polish they wanted it to have in the limited time. So then... Deco could focus on the gameplay. Cool. Art play could focus on um, gameplay and all sorts of different stuff. And yeah. the art as well. Then WayForward could kind of hit the art and go like, let's make this shine. Let's nice. make it really nice. Yeah, you guys are no stranger to this genre, obviously. I mean, are, are say, Shantae fans going to come in and, like, uh, recognize some of that some of that DNA when they're playing Bloodstained? <laughs> well, um, it has a powerful heroine, so that's a... That's true. That's, that's a WayForward thing, which is uh, sort of serendipitous. And so stylish. Yeah, and so stylish. But... But we really good job, Tim. Thank nice. you. Taking him down. Got him. Oh, that felt pretty good, actually. And so then you're gonna get your shard because that's what happens to demons. Oh, excellent. But um, um, 
Shantae Legacy. But, oh, but our mission on this was really not to make it feel like a way forward version of an Igarashi game, but just yeah, like, yeah. let's bring out that Igarashi style. Let's let's hit, get his vision nice. in here as good as we can in the time that's left. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, hopefully we accomplished it. Um, you know, I've worked with him before at Konami, so you know, I, I really wanted his vision to come through and him to be happy with the end product. Great. Well, yeah, so far it's a blast. I'm excited to, to check it out. On one, one more question. Oh, Does yeah. he still wear the cowboy hat? The <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen him without the cowboy hat. You have? Oh, wow. Have. It, it exists. But I can't tell you what's underneath. Oh, no. Okay. A uh, goblet of wine. Um, <laughs> but, Tom, thank you for swinging by and, and showing us Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. So it's going to be hitting PS4 on not too much longer from now. I believe it's June 18th. That's right, June um, 18th. So, yeah, not too much longer to wait until you can go and uh, slay those creatures of the night. So thanks again, Tom, and thanks, everybody, for watching.